It's in the bag. It's me. There's no Robbie, one half of the duo, but I have the other duo, the Bogey Bros, here with me today. We have a we have a weird week. Robbie's up at the Northeast Disc Golf Expo, so we thought, hey, let's bring in the Bogey Bros and talk about a hot topic that has kind of been around the foundation space this week, which is, hey, what do you have in your bag that's like sentimental? What like kind of doesn't fly like a normal disc of that nature would fly? And hey, would you use your bag now as a con- content creator to go play a tournament? So we're going to talk a little bit about that today. Uh, but before we do that, we got a special uh, sponsor today, Aura, and we'll hear from Trevor on Aura. Are you tired of constantly receiving spam phone calls to the point where you don't even bother answering your phone anymore? I know I have this issue. My phone is constantly blowing up. It'll say unknown number. Who is that? I don't know. You keep blocking them. It doesn't matter. They always pop up. Well, data brokers are actually making a fortune selling your information to robocallers, spammers, and others who want to learn more about you, like where you live. Well, today's sponsor, Aura, can identify brokers exposing your info and submit opt-out requests on your behalf. Brokers are legally required to remove your info if you ask them to, but they make it super hard to do. Let Aura handle it for you. Aura also does so much more to protect you and your family from online threats that you can't see. It's really easy to set up, so you don't have to download several different apps to get things like parental controls, antivirus, VPN, password management, identity theft insurance, and more. You get everything at one affordable price. Let Aura do the hard work of keeping you safe online so you can focus on other tasks with peace of mind. You can either let people continue to exploit and profit off your private information, or you can go to aura.com slash foundation disc golf to start your two-week trial, also linked down in the description. Thanks again to Aura for sponsoring this video. Let's hop back into it. All right, we're back. Thanks, Aura, again for that. Um, I did get the guys to put their bags, their current bags. I know they change all the time. We had them put them in disc RPM. So the first thing I really want to talk about, guys, is obviously, Hunter, I know you specifically will change out stuff in your bag quite often Mm -hmm. just for fun. He's Because you can. You play disc golf all the time. You keep it interesting. So what's your, like... What are your cornerstone discs in your bag? Or do you have any that you're like, okay, these are always like a a steady thing in my bag. I don't really change it. Nothing is always in my bag, like without fail. But Not a specific disc, but a mold pretty much. Yeah, I'd say there's a few molds. Yeah. But still, like even those, it's still not a a golden rule. But the general ones is you'll typically find a PA3 of some variety, an MD3, a Thunderbird, and a Destroyer. Mm -hmm. Those are my typical, like, I'll go away from the Thunderbird for a little bit to play around with a PD here and there. Mm -hmm. I'll mess with Casey Pro Rocks here and there. I'll put a Proxy or an Envy. But most of the time, yeah, PA3, MD3, Thunderbird, Destroyer. Those are like your comeback to Earth discs. Well, that's the also... Eventually, you'll always come back mm -hmm. to a Thunderbird. I also... Those are the only discs I need to actually perform, in my opinion. So, like, everything else in my bag is for fun, and it's like... Those are the only discs that like get me through. You need the it as well. Yeah, I mean, I, you always need like some type of crazy overstable, some type of crazy understable. But yeah. the mold for like the it, the captain's raptor, that, those two don't matter as long as it's really flippy and really overstable. What what is it about the PA three that keeps having you come back to it? The feel. <laughs> you threw it for too many years. Yeah, I was like the. Mm. I, I mean, because that would be the putter I would putt with if I would have never changed from PA threes if it wasn't for mm. content. Um, because that's just the putter I'm comfortable with. The It has like a normal putter rim, but then the concaveness, I don't like the flat top ones. Mm-hmm. Those are blech. The concave ones feel great because it makes it feel shallow in my hand. Okay. That's a good point. And then when I think of Hunter Thomas, I think of the Thunderbird. Mm-hmm. And I know They're like... The same. Yeah, I mean, you, that's pretty much you as a disc. The Hunterbird. Might have the stamp one. I like that. So again, Thunderbird, is it just... Is it the flight of the Thunderbird? Is it the feel? Is it everything? Is it familiarity? All the above. Yeah, the Thunderbird, I can throw farther than pretty much any disc in my bag. Um, The nine speed is just something that's very comfortable to me. It's also my farthest forehand disc nine times out of ten. True. And I just, if I need to hit a line, if I need, I just know what it's going to do. Because I've been throwing them for... I mean, I as soon as I got in disc golf, I copied Paul McBeth's bag. So that was like 2015, and Thunderbirds were like his staple, mm-hmm. and never went away from too much. I went to PDs a little bit, got sponsored by Prodigy, and never found a replacement during that. Um, and then as soon as I was done with Prodigy, right back to Thunderbirds. 
was on Discraft Underground for a little bit. The Vulture was the closest thing I had, but as soon as I was off of that, right back to Thunderbirds. It's just, there's nothing, I, I haven't found anything like a Thunderbird or a Destroyer, and I have tried that, everything. That S Line PD, though, Brett, may it rest in peace. The S Line PD was great. That was pretty yeah, great. That was great. So, the, with a the Thunderbird, do you feel like. Is a Thunderbird the you're so comfortable with the mold you can go in if you like lose a Thunderbird you're like okay whatever I'm gonna go grab another one and I'm back I'm, I'm back in it or do you have to like really season in your Thunderbirds to get them like re where you really want them? No, I mean I've I've never gotten a Thunderbird to be a fully flip up disc. Like mm -hmm. I've thrown Thunderbirds a lot. I've never got one that's like truly I throw it on highs or it flips up and glides. Mm -hmm. They've always just been straight with like a pushing finish and that's pretty close to what you get out of a brand new. Mm -hmm. brand new thunderbird like a brand new one will be like a hair more overstable but yeah it doesn't take much to get used Except to those luster ones lusters are very overstable. my gosh yeah yeah the color glow them. ones are also really nice and stable but once you've thrown a disc for a long enough time mm -hmm. then you can you kind of as soon as you pick it up you know what it's going to do yeah. Like the second it touches your hand, you know what type of Thunderbird you're holding. And so it does. it's not hard for me to find a replacement for the one in my bag. Because I, I think the, I haven't played long. I mean, I'm getting to the point where I've played long enough, but I haven't kept a mold in my bag long enough, maybe other than the zone. The zone's been in my bag since like basically day one. And I think I maybe feel the same way. I feel like I could grab any zone after a throw or two, I can compensate and I just know what it's going to do. So it's maybe like the equivalent to your Thunderbird. Discs are just really replaceable. Innova Fairway drivers in general are some of the most replaceable discs as far as mm -hmm. they're consistent out there. Yeah. Like Leopards, Leopard 3s, T-Birds. T I mean, you have your runs here and there, but like a Thunderbird, a Champ Thunderbird is a Champ Thunderbird for a, most cases. Yeah. Yeah, very, it's very yeah. rare that you find a flippy Thunderbird off the shelf. No. I don't, I've never found one, but I've only heard of a few. Some molds like the Thunderbird, just the way that they're built. Like, I feel like some molds are built in a way where like if the parting line or the dome gets off just a little, it mm -hmm. can affect the flight. A Thunderbird is built, the rim shape is in such a way that it's just an overstable shape. Mm -hmm. It would take a really weird mishap to make that disc not super stable. Yeah, that makes sense. But so yeah, I definitely, so when I think of a cornerstone type of disc hunter, I think of your Thunderbird as kind of that for you because the way you're describing it is that you can grab anyone pretty much and just, you're going to feel okay. You're going to feel comfortable if you have that disc in your bag. doesn't matter if it's brand new. doesn't matter if you've had it for a while, you're going to feel good about it. And then you mentioned Destroyer again. Mm -hmm. That's, it's a touchy subject a little bit because you know you went without one for a while so how do you feel coming back to it now being able to throw them again great yeah like i said the closest thing i found was a beat up force mm. um but there's nothing like a destroyer mm. out there uh one of the most underrated discs on the market because not talked about nearly enough anymore um there's a reason i genuinely genuinely believe if you gave every touring mpo player an open bag 90 percent of them will put destroyers in mm -hmm. and there's a reason for that it's true so as someone who's like still fairly new that has always kind of like shied away from a destroyer do you think a destroyer has a place in like a like beginner intermediate ish type no. player no because no. i don't feel i've even just thrown them for fun even even a blizzard destroyer has like some weird overstability to the it. paul told me once the most overstable destroyer he like ever threw was for the japan open they had to go 150 class uh -huh. and the 150 class i don't know if it was starlight or blizzard but he was like that was one of the most overstable destroyers well, weight, ever has, weight has nothing to do with with stability no. it only has to do with you could throw it harder yeah. so you might be able to flip it and then also the wind affects yeah. it more so right. in that so way. if you're paul mcbeth and you can get a destroyer up to speed mm -hmm. a max weight one then 150 class is not going to change the stability yeah. of a destroyer mm -hmm. okay so that and I, i've always thought that and I, and I appreciate you and your bag here you kind of modified both your destroyers you obviously have a more overstable one and like a little less stable one yes which is nice. yeah i changed all the flight numbers if you look at my bag on disc mm -hmm. rpm uh i even i made the vulture a nine speed because it's not a 10 speed um i changed all of them to be like how my discs actually fly mm -hmm. because when i didn't do that it looked like a jumbled mess and i was like that's not true <laughs> so i just all of them are different even the strike i made less stable because it's less stable than the flight numbers say um the the less stable destroyer is that your chick-fil-a destroyer mm -hmm. okay cool all right well that's good uh trevor let's pass it over to you now as far as like what are like some cornerstone and you you switch out things pretty often but i wouldn't say as much as hunter probably no, i would like to point out one thing because it relates directly to trevor's bag the uh -huh. stalker you see in my bag that is trevor's red stalker and that won't be in there long even though it's purple it is uh, yeah all my discs are purple right yeah. now he's right. going all purple. he's colorblind he yeah. only sees purple yeah um Cornerstones for me, 
Um, because when I think Trevor, I think Stalker. Yeah, that's one that I've been leaning on for a while. That's a disc I like. I and like the Stalker to, disc. Yeah, I like to. <laughs> I like to have at least one Stalker in my bag. Um, I don't know that there's anything though that like couldn't be replaced. The Slammer, I think, is your hardest. Yeah. The Slammer, yes. The Slammer is the only disc that I've like really directly tied to my name. Mm-hmm. Like people just know I throw one. So yeah. that's the one that like. I, I see no future where I take the slam around my bag. And because mm-hmm. it's such a, like I use it for like chippy shots anyway, so it can't really fail me. It's not, yeah. it's not like, sometimes you throw a distance driver long enough and you start to realize like it's failing you. It's not really what you need. When a, a disc like that you're using essentially as a catch disc with the basket, mm-hmm. it's not, it's pretty agreeable. Um, these days, there are a few discs like over the past year that I've been keeping at least one of, and that would be like, and that's a lot of my bag. Like, there's just a few discs that have stuck out. Like, I've, I've kept a Honey, I've kept a Warbird, I've kept a Destroyer, and I've kept a Raider in my bag. Mm-hmm. Um, the Fairway Drivers, the Stalker is really the only one I could say that, like, i am always got one of those. Those have shifted the most. Um, but then, like, with the mid-ranges, I've had some kind of rock in my bag, basically, since I started playing disc golf. Like, that's mm-hmm. just... Right now, I, I just switched made a switch where my AB a- rock that I've used forever is just kind of getting the reason I liked that rock was because it had enough stability to where my release is slight Anheuser. And when I did that, it would just go dead straight. Basically mm-hmm. it's getting to the point where it just slow turns now, which is fine. But I put in a, a new one that's not brand new to uh, kind of replace that slot. And I decided to slide it over. It's been a while since I've had this many mid ranges. I currently have five mids. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's something I'm just kind of experimenting with. It's probably not going to stay that way. I'm just trying to decide. I don't know. I, I'm just trying to decide where it makes sense. F- fairways of this, I throw the least amount. Like I throw a lot mm-hmm. of distance drivers and a lot of mids. That's where Trevor and I's game. Because we, well, we both throw, a lot, I throw a lot of putters and a lot of. Yeah. Uh, Trevor goes like putters, distance, drivers. distance driver. I shy away from putters and throw mids and fairways. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I'm a much better putter thrower. And so when we play doubles, we constantly like look at a line and I'll be in he'll like go to a, di- a disc and I'm just like why are you throwing that you should be throwing this and then he's like no Hunter, that doesn't make any sense yeah well Hunter's thought process is usually like we have we get to the same point with a different thought process Hunter's thought process is usually like let's say a hole is 380 Hunter's thought process is like I can get a uh a vulture there like i can get that disc there my thought process is usually like i don't think i'm gonna go long with my distance driver mm-hmm. and like they're both gonna end up in probably the same way it's just the way we think about it but that is like distance drivers for me a lot of times are a safety net because especially if i'm trying to hit a line i just mm-hmm. don't throw them super far it's one thing if it's if it was a middle of a field 380 i'm throwing the fairway but in the mm-hmm. woods hunter has a lot more confidence with his fairways and like smashing them on the line than i do mm-hmm. um definitely not my strength but yeah i have a i have quite a bit of things that are like solid in there yeah i think from a perceived point of view i didn't picture you as like your your uh distance drivers are kind of like your staple discs that don't really move around but it's true like i I think about the warboard the honey the the raider the destroyer yeah i mean you've had those pretty much in there as long as i've been here they they're just they're i thought i think you use a putter a putter thrower yeah that's what i really think of yeah well it's the one one weird thing in my bag is that forehand approaches are not even a huge part of my game, and yet somehow I can't get away from having three <laughs> different forehand approach discs right, in my bag. Yeah. Now, granted, I will throw backhands with any of those discs as well, but I have the Slammer, the Toro, and the Zone OS, which they do layer. Mm-hmm. The biggest issue is the Zone OS I am attached to the hip to because though it is incredibly niche, Whenever I need it, it's the only disc that does that, and it works every time. Mm Because I'm good at throwing flex lines, so whenever I need a disc to flex something really tight in the woods, that's the disc that you have to have, Mm -hmm. at least for me to be able to really get it to flex quickly, and it works like every time. Mm -hmm. So that's just kind of what I got stuck into with that situation. But what do you think it is about fairways that you makes you shy away from them? Are you just not confident in that? Like, have you not found the right discs, or are you just no, like? I like I like fairway drivers, and I think I I used to really like fairways. It's it's mostly like I feel like when I was throwing Prodigy in college, like I threw mostly fairways just because I they were more predictable. Mm-hmm. I think that it has a lot more to do 
anytime hunter and i's bag are always going to be somewhat dictated by the courses we play because we play the same like five or six courses over and over and over again all right. year long and i think that it just comes down to the holes that we play to me the fairway doesn't line up as much just to mm -hmm. my eye and so like that just i think subconsciously influences my bag that makes um sense. we play a lot of like new london and independence where like we play a lot of courses like most of the courses we play there's a couple exceptions but you have like the new london um end of the spectrum where it's like i'm gonna be throwing a lot of distance drivers just because these holes are really far mm -hmm. and then we play like peaks view and timbrook to where you're throwing putters and mids the whole time mm -hmm. and that's like a lot a lot of our videos are shot at those three courses yeah when we go to like east and hideaway there's some there's more opportunity to throw fairways i think um in, at least in my game mm -hmm. but i think what happens is i throw the distance driver so much at three of the, the distance drivers putters and mids mm -hmm. so much at three of the courses we play so often that i become dependent on them i know them a lot better right but i i, I like i like my fairways yeah i don't know it's just always been that makes sense though you're either yeah you that middle area we don't really have a lot of courses where you're like uh Every hole is like 350 to 400. Yeah, it just, and it all depends on how you perceive, like how everybody perceives distance. To some people, that yeah. might be like th these courses might be their money distance for fairways. It's always just been, you have so many discs in your bag that, like, and, and if you actually go out in a field and you throw all of your discs, mm -hmm. your fairways are going to go maybe 20 feet shorter. Then yeah. your uh, then your distance drivers on a golf line. So like it really comes down to like because another thing about me is I like holding a distance driver in my hand. Mm -hmm. A lot of people like the thinner rim. It doesn't really bother me. I actually like kind of feeling like I have a handful of the disc. Yeah, I never minded having the wide rim. So like that's a big part of it too. If I didn't like that, I wouldn't throw them as much. Mm -hmm. Especially even on forehands. Like I like the feeling of the thicker rim on the forehand, mm -hmm. and that's the opposite of the way a lot of people think. So I yeah, that comes down to it as well. Okay. Let's well, get to know. Um, let's talk about. We've kind of walked through your normal bags. What you mentioned this on one of your recent videos, and you actually lost some disc out of your bag, right? But correct me if I'm wrong. You've kind of made a commitment to like let's not be like sentimentally attached to any of our discs. Uh, Verbal commitment. Verbal commitment. Yeah, I'm. Uh, it hasn't am, come out in actions yet. I've tried. Yeah, I am sentimentally connected to a lot of my discs. I'm more so felt like I was getting it was it was too long where things were like my bag was way too solidified not completely like there's always been a couple molds here and there but I was like part of the fun of disc golf is shaking up your bag and I did feel like I needed a little shake up I wasn't trying to get rid of everything but I was like I was willing to put myself out there at risk of personal damage to shake up my bag a little bit and that's what I did mm -hmm. and I threw in quite a, I mean five or six new discs so right um, so let's talk about like sentimental wise, what disc in your bag are like, I know the slammer, right? That's the, basically the only one, the AB rock means a lot to me, but it's easier to part with now. Like if I had lost it because it's not what it was, Yeah, I still like, I still care about the disc and I'd like to keep it, but the slammer is the only one that would devastate me. Every other disc in my bag at this point, I could lose and I would get over certain ones like the foundation destroyer I have in my bag, that stamp, that's the only one I have of that stamp that we ran that stamp a while back. We should rerun it. Mm -hmm. um, but that was a really good run of destroyers. It's like a classic stamp that we only ran once, not a humongous run of them either. Mm -hmm. So like that would mean something to me. The Raider, the orange Raider, I've had my bag for like three years almost, it feels like. And, but that bag, that disc has actually been in my bag so long that if I did lose it, it would kind of feel like it was time for it to go. Right. You know, I'm, I'm okay with just like a, a burial ceremony of, of right. losing a disc, but yeah, the slammer is really the only one that would just like really bum me out. The other ones I could get over. Yeah. Um, the other one was the stalker and I lost that. In my right. Video. The bushes, baked yeah. beans, stalker. No, not yeah, bushes, baked beans. It's the, uh, Pennsylvania. The Raider. The yeah. Bushes, baked beans, oh. the Raider. Oh, okay. okay I've got the red good. stalker. All right, well, yeah. I'm going to yeah. throw it. So it's basically dead in my mind. It's not I, dead yet. I've I'm going to throw go. it, and then I'm going to just, you know, I'm going to see what happens. Yeah, One I've, wrong word, and might be end up in a lake. I've let go with the up hit for <laughs> sure. Um, So, Hunter, let's go over to you. What about yeah, good luck your bag? With his cold I, heart. Now, I'm going yeah, I'm going to say that you probably don't have to throw any sentimental dish. There's one the, dish I feel like The only Chick-fil-A, the only one's a Chick-fil-A destroyer. What about, what about, what about old blue? What's I feel like blue. 
the Zeus. I feel like you'd be no. a, a little bummed out. I lost it for like two years that, that one is time. True. You have you have already you yeah. already at one point came to terms. Um, and Ninja has a big Z Zeus at the end of the day, <laughs> and I re I replaced it quickly. The actually the one I replaced it with actually flies better. But I just like you being able to say too. Big Z Zeus mm -hmm. and it has an ESP stamp and people get really confused by it. So yeah. I like that. Um, but no, the Chick-fil-A Destroyer is the only one that I... And even that, like the only reason it's sentimental is because someone died it for me and sent it to me. And I'd feel bad like, that thing's gone, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, your bag is super stock. It's more no, like yeah. iconic, less sentimental. Yeah. 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 Now, I don't... If I care enough about a disc, it's on that wall or it's on my shelf at yeah. home. Like I, I think old trusty. Yeah, no, that one I should have burned. Yeah. Okay. The only reason that one stayed in the bag as long as it did was it's for the bit. gimmick because like yeah. I literally couldn't throw it. Yeah. Like I just could. I was trying as hard as I could, and I couldn't. Um. And so I just I had to keep it in for the bit. Yeah. And you love to hate it, and that's why you still have it, right? You still have old trusty. Maybe. Um. Not here. I didn't see it at home the yeah. other day, so I don't know. So yeah, you're kind of giving it away. Yeah, you're more of a. I give a lot of random discs away, mm -hmm. just because like some of it. Like we did that when we did Hunter's box, mm -hmm. the monthly subscription box. I gave a lot of quote unquote like iconic, if you yeah. will, discs from my bag into that because like someone who's watched our channel for years, I know they would be more excited about getting that disc than I care about it. Right. Yeah. And so. Yeah. Yeah. And you're not a guy that's really like seeking out like really specific runs or plastics, right? Mm -hmm. You're just like, I'm, you're throwing stuff. Uh, no. Yeah. I mean, I love Shimmer Star Destroyers. Don't have one in my bag right now. Love those though. I love Color Glow soon. Thunderbirds. You will soon. Um, I have a Color Glow Thunderbird in my bag. Um, there's a, yeah, there's a few things that like I love specific plastics of stuff, but I'm not going to go on Dollar Disc Golf Auction and. No find it I'm, yeah. yeah it's like if it's on my shelf or if we get one in sick it's in my bag if not back to stock yeah i have an innova fd that i've like kind of resist throwing because i don't want to get attached to it and then have to go buy them it just seems silly to me yeah i i like i like having different stamps and plastics but not because i think they're superior i think that they're fun i think it's fun having like mm -hmm. different identifiers on your disc that make them unique i, I genuinely think for my game a shimmer star destroyer gets to hyzer flip faster Mm -hmm. so that's why I like that one. Should mm -hmm. go G Star destroyer. And uh, I used Should to. We start carrying G Star. G Star is a great time. You would hate it, huh? No, I used to have some of the G Star. Like I used to throw a G Star crate, and I had a G Star Rhino. The G Star Rhino I could tolerate because well, back then I wasn't as adverse to floppier discs. But the G Star Rhino, I basically just did these with them, yeah. <laughs> so that didn't matter. And the crate, some of the old G Star, like the rim still had enough stiffness in it. It just kind of was a little pop toppy. But yeah, some of it these days is a little too soft. But the same thing, the Color Glow Thunderbird, it has like a weird flight where it pushes more and then has good bite. Mm -hmm. So I've always loved a Color Glow Thunderbird. Um, so I have a Henna Blom Roof one in the bag right now. Yeah, those ones but, are very cool. But yeah, no, at the end of the day, I, I mean, you could, I'd put my whole bag on the line tomorrow, anytime. Yeah, because I mean, there there is some value being able to be like, okay, well, I lost that passion. Oh, big deal. I'll just grab another one. Or I lost There's a Thunderbird. A yeah. yeah. Which is nice. Now, your your bag's kind of like that, Trevor. I mean, for the most part, you do have some very specific stuff in there too. Yeah, I do. I, I would say a lot of my stuff is replaceable as far as like the flight. The only disc, like now that Stalker's out of my bag, the only disc that is like really seasoned and specific that I can think of, I mean, is that uh the one that comes to mind is that raider mm -hmm. but at the end of the day it doesn't take that long to beat in a raider to that point mm -hmm. it takes about two months and then it'll stay there but yeah it's not that difficult yeah, you lost that buzz to that someone seasoned in for yes you, that yeah. one that one was very specific I, I lost yeah i lost a couple discs that were like the more specific and i'm trying to replace them with ones that are i'm right now what i'm currently doing right now is trying to resist the urge to carry like six rocks this year because I kind of miss it. Just do it. <laughs> Just right do now, it. I have three, and I haven't tested them all yet, so I don't know if there's I, probably only two are going to stay, maybe, but it's, it's an urge. <laughs> so, so this kind of brings me to my another point I want to talk about. Um, something I'm really trying to resist is finding a disc, like my Vulture is this. My Vulture does not fly like a normal Vulture should, and I don't want to rely on that disc. I'd rather have a disc that is in that slot that I know I can pull off the shelf, kind of the conversation we're just having. 
what disc in each of your bags is more like, okay, I love the fly. This disc is beat into the point that it's like, you know, kind of flies a little different than the flight numbers indicator, what a normal one off the shelf would. Hunter, do you have any of those in your bag right now? I, I, all. <laughs> all of them? I, I've literally altered the flight number on... Every one of them. Like my ESP zone, not a zone. It's very, very straight. Uh, the MX-1 is probably pretty true. The Quake I just got, so it's the only Quake I've ever thrown, so I don't know that. Um, both my MD-3s don't fly like normal MD-3s. The Fuse probably flies like a normal Fuse. Um, the the it, yeah super flippy the strikes more over stable than a normal strike my zeus is flippier than normal zeus one destroyer is flippier one's normal my force is a really overstable force what force is in your bag right now that foundation bar stamp one from years ago ah, yeah it's like the most unstable force crazy I've stable, yeah. yeah so like none but in my where i'm at right where i can walk into a retail store or a warehouse and grab discs mm. i don't look at a disc as what it's supposed to do mm -hmm. i just take it as what does it do when i go throw it yeah so i don't care if a uh, vulture is crazy overstable or crazy understable or passion is like supposed to, what i don't care what a disc is supposed to do mm -hmm. because like i'm not worried about i need to go buy this disc i can go feel discs and be like oh yeah this one feels like it'll be a flippy destroyer this one mm -hmm. feels like it'll be an overstable md3 or i need an overstable md3 i'm gonna just go over and throw a uh archive instead or something mm. too dark uh -huh. see that's that's was going to kind of be my existing. point yeah i know i feel like it too so beautiful um i kind of feel like again for me like you have a lot of experience with a lot of different plastic and a lot of different discs so like you said it's there's value to you being able to go in and just like oh this feels overstable i don't feel like i can get to that point where like oh this feels a little maybe less stable than a normal force or whatever um so that is a little bit dangerous for someone like me who was like, okay, I know what my FD does. I've beat it up a bunch because I threw a bunch of bad shots with it. Oh, I lost it. I need to replace it. So I'm going to grab another, another FD and I need to be conscious of like, oh, well, maybe I don't really like the FD as it is off the shelf. I think the trap, because you're kind of in, you, you're a technically COVID disc golfer. Mm -hmm, so you're in the like newer age of disc golf where people don't do mold minimalization mm -hmm. right but people still get sucked into the mold minimalization trap yeah. but they do it in a way that's not sustainable now because yeah. it's like you get an fd it stays in your bag for a long time but you don't have three fds in your bag yeah. so you have an f1 fd that fd starts as your straight shot and becomes your flippy one mm -hmm. when you are a mold minimalist then it's not a, that big of a problem because but rocks are the easiest thing for cycling right mm -hmm. i have i don't have this currently but like i have four rocks mm -hmm. right i have a brand new one that's overstable i have one that's been in my bag for like a month or two that's like kind of straight i have one that's been in my bag for like three or four months that'll flip up a little bit and then i have one that's really flippy mm -hmm. so if you lose one you already have four in there that you're just a little bit away from the next one taking its yeah. place and you can survive for a few rounds while that gets beat in yeah and you just replace the most overstable and over and over mm -hmm. But if you aren't in that category, and instead of that, you have a a rock, a buzz, a hex, and a uh, Quake, fuse, right. Yeah. right, as your four, and then the hex gets flippy, 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 mm -hmm. then what people, the mistake people make is they're like, oh, I need to put another hex in, yeah. when you didn't lose a hex anymore. No. You now have lost a fuse. It yeah, just right. was stamped as a hex, because yeah. now it's your flippy mid. Yeah. And so it's like, if you don't have one mold taking up all of them, then like, if you got an end of a FD, and you beat it up, like, you know, and then you lose it, you didn't lose an FD anymore. You have now lost a cicada. Yeah. Right. And so it's like, now I need to go to, if you want to directly replace that, you can't go to the FD. Mm -hmm. That's not going to replace that. You need to go to the cicada. Unless you buy it used, basically. And so that's kind of like, if you're going to be in the mindset of, I want to keep discs in the bag and I want to beat them up, then mm -hmm. mold minimalize, get everything out of your bag and just have four destroyers. Because yeah. then it's very easy. You just put, when you replace in cycling, you're not replacing my flippiest destroyer, I need to go grab another flippy destroyer. You replace the most overstable one mm -hmm. and then your Shift slightly down. less one yeah. is the one you're throwing for that shot. And yeah, you're gonna have to put a little less angle on it for like three rounds or four rounds, but mm -hmm. then it'll become that flippy destroyer again. Yeah. And I think the mistake I make, cause I really don't do that with anything, but like I'm trying to do that with my FDs cause I really like the FD and I feel like there's a lot of options. I think the mistake I made and am still making is I love the S line FD. And instead of putting like three S line FDs in, I was like, okay, I like the S line FD. I'm going to get this Innova one, which is already flippier than that one. And then I tried a C line, which I don't really like. And now I'm trying like the, um, 
the glow one that just came out. And they're already different, like there's already different instead of sticking with one type of plastic. Is that correct? Is that the right thinking? Or should I try to mix up the plastics a little bit? Let's just go this way. Let me, so we have my bag on the screen. Yep. Okay. Let's say that I was me currently and I've decided I'm going to be as good of a disc golfer as I can possibly be. Mm -hmm. What does the next several months look like for my bag? So what I would do is my MD3s are already in an okay spot where I got a kind of flippy one and a nice overstable one, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not changing anything today. Mm -hmm. I'm keep throwing those until my flippy MD3 gets too close to my fuse. Mm -hmm. Then the fuse is coming out and a new MD3 is going in. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I have three MD3s. Okay, now I'm throwing those until, you know, uh, the brand new one might take the quake out or something if I find the right one. Mm -hmm. And like, that's how I'm doing it. And the same thing with my um, fairways is like, until my Thunderbird beats in a little bit to be that Vanguard, now I'm taking the Vanguard out and a brand new Thunderbird's going in. Until mm -hmm. that, you know, now they beat up and now my Thunderbird, my flippy one flies like my Vulture. Vulture out, Thunderbird in. Okay, now my flippy one flies like my Passion finally. Passion out, Thunderbird in. And then next thing you know, six, seven months from now, I have all Destroyers up top, all Thunderbirds in the middle, all MD3s in the bottom, and then you just complement with the Captain's Raptor on one end because you're never going to find a Thunderbird that flies like that, the id on the other end because you're never going to find one like that. And like you complement with these stock trick shot discs, mm -hmm. and then your core is Destroyer, Thunderbird, MD3, PA3. Mm -hmm. But like that's how you get there. Yeah. As you start with, for you, if it's like an FD that you really want, what is the FD that you can always get your hands on that you're com comfortable with? Probably C-Line. So you just start with, I'm putting one C-Line FD in. Okay, now my C-Line FD has gotten close to my passion. Boom, passion out, next C-Line FD in. Mm -hmm. And that's how you get to that point. So you if want you, the you, same plastic typically. That's the easiest the, simply because... The most you could do is the, the, when you're trying to get as good as possible... You never want to mold minimalize to the point where you're hand, handcuffing yourself. That's why no. you complement with other molds. Mm -hmm. But the least amount of disc feels that you can put in your bag, the better, because then you're just ha your muscle memory has a better chance. Well, we all, I can't say we all, I guess, but with, because I currently am in the modern era of disc bag building because this is more fun yeah. to have yeah. a bunch of molds do a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Way more fun way to play mm -hmm. disc golf. But you're not going to be as good as you can this way. Um, and that's my honest belief. Because you'll get around where my MD3 is hot. And so I can take my MD3, but because I don't mold minimalize, my options are now, I take this MD3 that's not made for this shot, but I'm really confident with it right now, and I force it on the shot, or I go to a different disc that I haven't been feeling as much this round, mm -hmm. and I try to do the shot it's made for. Right. Mold minimalize, like... You kn I know I'm always confident with a Thunderbird in my hand. I'm always confident with MD3, and I'm always confident with a Destroyer. Mm -hmm. So if I can have those discs cover as many shots as possible, right. I'm always confident. Yeah, pre-shot confidence is a huge thing in golf, and certain discs are going to feel better in your hand and make you feel more comfortable than others. So mm -hmm. the idea is to lean into those the most. Because for me, that would be like a rock having that if i have that in my hand the most times possible per round. That is the best situation to put myself in. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. I think the, my honest opinion is the reason why the shift has happened is A, Sales, the baby. top pros have gotten away from Innova mm -hmm. and Innova was the bag cycling company. And so when they go to a new company, right, when Paul goes to Discraft, he can't just go grab a bunch of stock buzzes and they all fly different. So his bag, although now it's gotten more mold minimally when he first went was wide, mm -hmm. but sales, the con players contracts are tied to sales. Right. So why sell one mid range when I can sell four? You know, why put my name on disc, one fairway? A new disc always sells the best. Yeah, and so if I'm a new disc golfer and I got every pro pushing these different discs and it's always the marketing spin, it's always this new distance driver could be the one that fill in the mm -hmm. blank. And it's like, that's what I needed. And so if, if you're gonna, because if you cycle destroyers, once I got eight destroyers, I'm good for like four years. Mm -hmm. Like I'm legitimate. I, I, there is no reason I need another destroyer for a long time. Right. Unless I just lose all of them. Right. But if I have a destroyer, a Hades, a Zeus, and a crank or whatever, then, you know, I get a little tempted because, like, well, I have one crank in the bag and, you know, that new charger from Innova looks kind of sick. Let's switch it. Let's try yeah. it out. So I think, I think that's why the new disc golfers this probably sounds like a foreign language of like minimalizing molds because no one does it anymore. And I, I think most of it is the manufacturer's bottom line. Mm hmm. I mean, I mean, that makes a lot of sense too. And 
different and that's i think why we see a bunch of a ton of different plastic types as well like i don't think they're inherently super different from one another a lot i mean like a champ and star are different right but like i'm thinking of like a disc craft like esp swirl and esp and then like they're trying to put jawbreaker into i get it it's cool it's new but um it rarely super affects the slight flight characteristics some of them do but some of them really don't they just look cooler yeah um but to be clear if you're just playing disc golf to have fun don't mold minimalize way more boring yeah. way to play yeah. but if you're trying to be if you want to make it on the pro tour or you want to dominate your local scene you want to get as good as possible as quick as possible then that's the yeah. way it's a, it's a leg up and like there are guys out there um, who have been really good at disc golf not doing it too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just, if you're looking for some kind of leg up, you're probably going to benefit from it. Yeah, because cause for me, like I got away, I was only disc craft and then I got away and it was fun trying out a bunch of different stuff. Well, this year I'm trying, my goal by the end of the year is to be 900 rated. That's like where I want to be. And I know the only way I'm going to do that is I've got to figure out some stability in my bag, probably lean on some cornerstone discs in my bag and then just try to be as best I can with yeah. those discs and not would, mess around. I'd be curious to know, like, there is definitely psychology around, like, the way a disc, if you've played disc golf a long time, there's psychology around the way a disc feels in your hand and how it's going to affect the way you throw it. Uh, mm -hmm. For instance, if I handed Hunter a disc and he feels like it's understable, he's going to release it on hyzer. I'd love to do a test, like, you blindfold Hunter, and we give him a stack of discs one at a time, and we just tell him to throw it. And it wouldn't work now because he knows the experiment. We do it with somebody who doesn't know what we're doing. And we just say, throw this disc and just watch how they throw the disc based on how it feels in their hand. And, and probably sometimes they would be throwing it on hyzer because they think it's flippy and it would be flippy, but maybe sometimes it wouldn't be. And I, cause I think if you have a disc that subconsciously makes you want to throw it on hyzer because it feels flippy, but it's not an understable disc then that's probably a bad disc. I'd, lo I'd love to know like what that would do. Well, I think from the cornerstone molds for me, I throw them harder mm -hmm. every time. I've noticed that in my game is like, if yeah. you give me a disc that I'm not nearly as comfortable with, I, my body, like I don't commit to the shot nearly as much trust. because like, I don't trust it nearly right. as much. So mm -hmm. like an MD three. Cause you know, an MD three and a Thunderbird are just going to burn over. Yeah. I know right. what they're going to do and I feel confident with them. And then I commit to the shot way more. And when I'm at my best, I'm throwing all of my shots at like 80% power and like slight hyzer to a lot of hyzer. That's when I'm playing my absolute best golf. So whatever discs I can do that with mm -hmm. and have a good successful flight are the ones I'm most confident in. That's why if you watch like, us just goofing off having fun you'll see me throw way more discs mm -hmm. out of my bag versus you watch me trying to break 68 you'll see me go passion destroyer md3 zone for approach shots yeah. obviously mm -hmm. but like i won't really stray off of that much yeah. because like yeah. i'm trying to perform versus i'm just out there to have a good the time the most predictable shot is the one you've already thrown that day yeah <laughs> one you've already seen that's happen that's why like when Connor did his break challenge, he had thrown that passion so many times that day. It was hard. You to got your shot and be like, "Well, this might not be perfect, but we know what it's going to do." Yeah, the passion's going to get you in the. It's that's why land it, inbounds. It, you see pros do it too, like Drew Gibson with that orange mid range that was a buzz, but his mm -hmm. orange mid range, like he got hot with it during tour championship, just and so he just used it on shots that he might not have in practice, yeah. but it's like if it works, it, it was hot, and he <laughs> yeah. knew, well, I can get this thing to like 20 feet, and when you are when you feel hot, you're going to make that putt. Sometimes, yeah. yeah, sometimes you just feel like a disc is do, can do no wrong, and you need to throw it as many times as possible. Yeah. Um, so the, uh, we kind of talked about it, so we'll just briefly recap it, but my final question to both of you was, okay, let's just say today, you're like, I'm going to compete in t tournaments for the rest of the year. How does your bag change if you're trying to score well, you're trying to win tournaments? What? How does your bag change? Hunter, you kind of already answered it, but what does your bag look like if you're going from creator hunter to I'm trying to yeah, are we saying well? In this scenario, or let's, it, it would it be better to say we're not going to be doing content for the year. Like, no, you're, 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 you're focusing completely on because if, cause if content's in the picture, I'm not changing my yeah. bag. Yeah, I would change. <laughs> no, you're, you're, let's just say you're, you're, a, this is your touring bag. Yeah. You're like, I'm touring, I'm playing on, on I think the, I would definitely try to go, I would get backups for my favorites in. So like, for instance, the Vanguard and the Vulture are already close to Thunderbirds to where I can accomplish it right away. I would take both of those out for just simply, if I play a water course, I have three Thunderbirds in my bag. Mm -hmm. Same thing with the Destroyer. I would take the Force out and put a different, another Destroyer in. Cause like, I don't, there's certain shots where you just don't need it that often and you can't accomplish it with other discs when you do need it. Mm -hmm. Um, but to be honest with you, 
I don't think I would change too, too much. I would just practice putting. Because <laughs> right. like at, at the end of the day, I could score with this bag just as well as any bag if I can't make 20 footers. It doesn't matter. <laughs> so, and you're probably taking out Banger GT, you're putting with PA3s probably? No, I made a commitment. You made a commitment. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Even if I'm not making content, the people voted. I'm yeah, not. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's, that's the Banger GT. I'm no Robbie C. The Banger GT yeah, that's, until that's December 31st. That's honorable. He, he didn't do that this year, did he? No. He knew better. Yeah, he, he knew, knew better. better. Yeah, I mean, that would have been... Phew. That'd been tough. He's gonna have to switch to new putter anyway. So he is. Yeah. Is that dropping on next week's show? Uh I he may already put I think the video his video on his channel is dropping soon. But okay. he's wow. switching up all 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 things putter. I'll have to ask Edgar Styles over here. <laughs> so what about you, Trev? What are what are you changing for um, your in the bag? I would definitely simplify it. I think my mid ranges, which it kind of has taken form for now this way, but I would I would be going all rocks with a Supra for the flippiest disc just because for me, um, having like a really replaceable, really flippy disc is just convenient. And then mm -hmm. probably, I don't know, I'd probably, I'd probably stick with the Quake on top because like I am not somebody, I do not like getting tied up in the game of trying to find an overstable this or, or this or that. Like I'm going to find your stock Rock 3, which I like the two times, but like whatever the that that flies like and then i'll work down a little bit from that yeah. like i'll find my if my fairways if i decided to go with stalkers i'll take what the normal stalker flies like and i'll work a little bit down i'm not going to try to find one that's beefy um because it's just gonna it's just gonna make it difficult to replace um but yeah fairway drivers i would probably that's one where i, I would throw stalkers and then probably t-birds realistically mm -hmm. um because a new t-bird is quite overstable and then distance drivers i think i would pretty much go with destroyers raiders and i would throw the honey in there as a compliment i will say though the time lapse the new time lapse is pretty awesome like i it's very comfortable in my hand i like that it has dome to it i have room to get my hands under the rim um and that thing is sick because the first proto when it came out i was like this is pretty pointless it was it's so, so stable, stable. Mm -hmm. the new one is awesome it like i can throw flex lines and it gets a nice little flex but comes back at the end like i don't want to say it's a destroyer i would say it's closer to a pd2 and that's probably what he was more going for mm -hmm. but it it rocks like it is a legitimately awesome disc and simon lazat is going to be throwing that thing all over people yeah and eagle yeah i'm i'm very excited to watch that well okay well, that's good to know i mean even though you're you have like these creator we're like, gonna be i, I mean we're playing that. an a tier this year we've already committed so well, also yeah. the monthly matches i care more about that than any tournament i played that is a good so i am i we are as much as our bags are for content they're also to be last year was a weird purpose. one because yeah. we stopped being competitive disc golfers basically after june yeah Mm -hmm. We like we were doing like literally the end of the year like we competed from time to time. I had break sixty eight was the only that thing is I cared true. About. You did have that, but like for me, so my bag was way up in the air. I just I could just kind of do whatever I wanted because we were doing a lot of like more low key videos this year. Mm -hmm. Since we're doing monthly matches every single month again, um, there will be a reason to be very competitive once a month. Yeah, and I'm doing a break series this year, so like I have a lot more pressure to like know what i'm doing with my bag yeah okay well that i mean that's good to know so it is for content but and you're trying to switch out and have fun but you do have like your shots selected you do have like purpose to your bag yeah well and especially with the break series and this is how it was for hunter like you get to a point where you just have to if you're missing a shot that is required for that break series you have to find that disc like that mm -hmm. that series can kind of dictate your bag throughout the year yeah well, awesome. Well, I appreciate you guys coming on. Um, before we wrap it up, obviously we have Four to do time, maybe five time. I don't know, I've been on the show. Good. I'm trying to see, think how many times I've been on. I think, I think it's like my third. Only your third. No, I think. Uh, I think your fourth. I want to say this is my fourth or fifth. Cause I've been on. I went on with Brody once. I think. Yeah, Trevor. I went on one more time than you. I, I went on once with you, once by myself, and this is my second time with you. Those are the only three I, I remember. Been on twice by myself, once with you, and then another time. I think this is my fifth. Maybe Travis went on twice. Yeah, I, think he went on. I think he went on twice by himself. The five time. I did. Five times. Yeah, I think I only time. went on once by myself. Right. Uh, leave a leave a comment below if we need a five time in the bag destroyer from from Trev. And I just want to let everybody know that the Grip Lock Tour Life uh, merch battle is mm -hmm. still really close. We are Very. trying to pull off the greatest upset of all time. So make sure to support. It wouldn't be that great. I mean, we are the more popular show. Yes. Make sure to support <laughs> Grip Locked uh, merch in the uh, in our Grip Lock collection at Foundation Disc. Really, Tour Life's kind of pulling off the upset right now. 
in a roundabout way. Don't let tour life win. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's more the way to put it. Right. We beat him in every other it's category. It's going straight to Silas' head. Yeah, we beat him in every other category. Don't let yeah. him win in the merch. Um, so, yeah, make sure you check out the uh, merch in the collection. There's a tour life collection on the site. There's also a, a grip locked, you know. I've, I'll say it. I'll say it publicly. I think grip locked merch is cooler. Well, here's the thing about the grip lock merch, too, is like, we barely even scratched the surface. We made a few items to kind of kick it off. Tour life, man. Brody, every single day, Texan Hunter, we need this, we need that. They just, they're doing anything they can. Yeah. Well, they're all Yuli Horse ideas. Yeah. You can only milk the Yuli Horse so much. Yeah. <laughs> and if I've learned anything in life, you can only milk a Yuli Horse so much. Yeah. Keep it in the bag. So, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, thank you, Heiser uh, Disrax, for sponsoring this portion of the this end of in the bag whatever this chaos is um make sure you check them out there's a link in the description below 10 percent off with the code how many likes bag. how many likes to get you to actually upload the pictures of your disc onto your bag how many likes 500 yeah sure 500 likes 500 likes yeah, yeah. i'll have my assistant do it yeah right yeah, he's gonna make me do connor it. connor only does two things for no i'm trip. connor's butler Oh, yeah. that's true. I'm Connor's assistant. Oh, well. I have that, to give that, the assistant to Connor's that's assistant. That's about right. Yeah, and if you haven't checked out the Connor horse shirt, make sure you pick one up. Uh, again, thanks, Hydro Disc Racks. Thank Disc RPM. And then make sure, hey, subscription box this month, month we sold out. It was fire. It was the Connor box. Next month, do not miss next month's box. True that. It, it's going to be great. So check it, it out on January 1st. Yep. If you right. miss it, it Maybe. can't be in the bag. <laughs> <laughs>